Well, hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm good now. You guys check out my calf muscles. <laughs> what do you think? What it's do you distracting. Think? Oh my gosh. <laughs> These are some man legs right here, everybody. Who do you think you are, Pee Wee Herman? John Wayne. <laughs> you call that a calf muscle? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> oh no. Hello. Oh no. <laughs> I have to talk like John Wayne the whole, <laughs> the whole time review. now. Yeah. <laughs> so how's it going? Uh, good, how are you? You want to talk about a movie? Pee Wee! That's my name, don't wear it out. Pee Wee's Big Adventure? Yay! 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 Yay. Huzzah! You know, it's funny because you had uh, mentioned doing this movie a few months ago, and that was before Paul Rubens passed away. Yes, yeah, exactly. It was. I, I had a I had a list of like, yeah, here's a here's half a dozen movies that I'm familiar with and could could talk about for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was before uh, before Rip Pee Wee. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. when he passed away, I was like, well, now we got to talk about. Yeah, it. exactly. I have respect for the the graceful celebrity exit. Mm -hmm. Norm Macdonald. You know, yeah. It's like they don't make a whole whole to do about uh, an illness. It's just, they're just. They actually value their privacy. Yes, mm -hmm. they're just. And they're, they're, whatever time oh. they have left, you mm -hmm. know. Right, yeah. right. I mean, he's, he had a good run. He was 70. Like, he, he had a good run. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to imagine him as 70. Yeah. It's just, Pee Wee's just eternal, eternally youthful. Well, they did with that Netflix movie. They did digitally de age know, him. <laughs> but they didn't have to do a whole lot, I don't think. Just some smooth end of the skin, but. Yeah, yeah. I saw his stage show, his Broadway show. Uh, maybe it's about 15 years ago. Yeah, something it was, like that. yeah. That yeah, was yeah. right before the, they started talking about doing another movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, no, I mean, he looked great. He just, he looked like he was a little older. Looked like he looked like he was just slightly more small. He wasn't his, uh, a rail thin young man anymore. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Not the same kind of energy that he yeah. has. He in was life. kind of getting squeezing himself into that suit, you know, a little <laughs> bit, just a little bit, you know, yeah. yeah. But it was still but he wonderful. He still do it. He didn't turn into Rob Reiner. <laughs> always, I always think of the Rob Reiner effect where it's like Paul Rubens could play Pee Wee at 70, but Rob Reiner, you know, you're a meat, meathead one day, and then the next Rob morning, Reiner the you're, next. You're Rob Reiner the next. <laughs> and uh, I guess you could call it the Chevy Chase effect now. He just turned into a giant guy, black guy with a bald head. <laughs> Looks like a big Santa Claus. <laughs> like, uh, where, but, you know, certain people can continue to play the same role for a while now. So that was Paul Rubens. But let's, let's, uh, let's not dwell on the present. Mm -hmm. uh, as sad as it is, let's go back to the magic of the past. Yes. Pee Wee's Big Adventure, which I'm surprised we haven't done on review before. We've mentioned it it's, so many times. Uh, I think one of my favorite movies, and I rewatched it, and it's the rare time I can think of absolutely no critique on it. <laughs> it's absolutely perfect. It really is. I have no, no negative comments or like, oh, they could have done this differently. It's just it stands as a work mm -hmm. of art. I have one negative comment. I have but. a cinema sin. At the beginning, the whole idea, I guess the concept of the movie, uh, Pee Wee loves his bicycle. His bicycle gets stolen, and he goes on a quest to get it back. Yes. That's, that's it. The hero's it's a, journey. It's a, yeah. yeah. It's uh, very straightforward. It's, a, it's very straightforward. In story and epic. And they, uh, they spend a lot of time at the beginning building up just how much he loves this bike. There's so many, like, hero shots of the bike, oh, yeah, and yeah. the music's all grand, and, but... When he goes around back of his house, he has the little like number pad. Yes, yes. To, on the, to open on the, the windowsill. Yeah, yeah, to open the garage door. When he opens that number pad, you can see the thing is just dangling there. It's just held on with duct tape. <laughs> it's just a cheap ass prop. That's that, my that, complaint. That's, that's, that's the complaint. That's Otherwise, it. it's a perfect Other movie. Other than that, it's absolutely perfect. <laughs> it's flawless. Yes, except for that one thing. Uh, yeah. Maybe he should have kept it in a locked garage instead of behind a. a, a it was like a hedge wall or yeah. something like that. <laughs> With a fake spotlight on it. Right. There's like yes. paint, the wall is painted to look like a spotlight. Yeah, I but never just, noticed that. Oh, it's so great. There's so many details and all the, uh, I guess, yeah, that's maybe where to start is that this was a movie made by a bunch of people without a lot of experience making movies mm -hmm. that had something to prove. Yeah. Tim Burton's first feature. Yeah, it was. The Frank and Weenie short. After the Frank and Weenie. Yeah. Uh, Paul Rubens, of course, mm -hmm. just a comedian. But he was he was the... he was grinding out that character, the Groundlings, I think, for like yeah. for but, half a decade or so. Yeah, I'm going to ask you where where I because I don't know where Pee Wee came from. He was just a stand-up bit. 
Uh, yeah, it was like kind of a he had his own show. It was like the Pee Wee Hermit show kind of thing. Like, where it had it had like it's almost like the Saturday morning cartoon, but it was made for like more like drunk adults. It like a like. live show you're talking yes, about. Yes, it was okay. a live show. Like they, they, that's where um, like Phil Hartman was still playing like the boat captain and mm -hmm. all this stuff. All those characters like from his TV show came from this kind of hour long like thing. I think he had a special on HBO too. Yeah, and yeah. it was it was a little more adult than what the the. Saturday morning show ended up being. Yeah, yeah. Like, I remember there's a part where he has... Uh, Who is Playhouse comes after the movie. After though. the movie, Indeed, yeah. yeah. Uh, but in the, yeah, the stage show, he had uh, mirror shoes so he could look up the girl's skirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she says, joke's on you, I'm not wearing underpants. <laughs> and, then and then he's disappointed. <laughs> because he's not, like, a pervert. He just thinks, oh, this is what... You, he has he's the mentality of a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to look up the girl's skirt to see her underwear <laughs> and is disappointed when she doesn't have underwear. That was the that's stage a, show. A little more adult. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, The Groundlings was the famous L.A. comedy troupe. Yeah, it yeah. It was like him, Phil Hartman, uh, Elvira, Sandra Peterson. She mm -hmm. started there, uh, who has a cameo in this movie. Um, Phil and, Hartman wrote this. And Phil yeah. Hartman co-wrote it, yeah. yeah. And there's a little know cameo that. at the end, yes, too. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's like a reporter. Right. It's weird, too, because I think of Phil Hartman as, like, 90s comedy guy. Right. It's, like, going all the way, what is this, 84, right? Is that this movie? I think so. That's yeah. awesome. 84, right, 85, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, uh, Phil Hartman co-writing the script, uh, Paul Rubens in his first lead, Tim Burton's first feature, yeah. Danny Elfman, who did the score, his first time doing a score. Uh, amazing score. It, and it, they all knocked it out of the park. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Because before the movie, it's, it's, you know, Pee Wee Herman, you know, a Pee Wee's Big Adventure, and the next credit is Danny Elfman. Like, yeah. that's how important he is to this mm -hmm. movie. I mean, he really just sets that atmosphere. And yeah. it's such a unique, like, unique uh, uh, soundtrack. You know, well, yeah. the, the movie's relatively low budget. So, yeah, starting because the credits are, aside from the title, the movie, they're all just, like, white credits over black. Yeah. And so you really need to establish that tone and that music, mm -hmm. like, does that without any sort of, like, crazy opening credit sequence or visuals. But it's like, yeah, Oingo Boingo was kind of niche and uh, mm -hmm. uh, abstract. Uh, Tim Burton's style was kind of, it's all these people who had, were almost like outsiders that yeah. made this like gigantic mainstream successful mm -hmm. comedy. <laughs> it's like all these forces just, like we always talk about the like lightning in a bottle movie, the original Ghostbusters, where it's just like the yeah. right people yes. working on the project at the right time and it all just like Star comes Wars. together. Star mm -hmm. Wars, yeah. yeah. Marsha Lucas, the most John important Williams. part of Star Wars. John Williams <laughs> is the most important part of Star Wars. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah, true. Can you imagine that movie with different music? The yeah. Danny Elfman music? Just, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that uh, would be different, yeah. I love little girls, they make me feel so good. John Carpenter. Ding, 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 oh. ding, 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 ding. <laughs> for, for two hours yeah. of Star Wars. <laughs> At the ending, like... Death Star Battles. It's just silent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stabilize your rear deflectors. Watch for enemy fighters. They're coming in. Three marks at 210. Oh, five will cover for you. Hey there. I just lost my starboard end. But uh, yeah, still on the opening credits, I, my, in rewatching it, my first laugh, and I don't even know if it's an intentional one, the music's all bombastic and circusy, and then the title of the movie comes up, and it's called Pee Wee's Big Adventure, which is like this grand sounding title. Mm -hmm. But the, the credit is so tiny. It's colorful, <laughs> but it's really little in the mm -hmm. frame. Yeah. I was like, is that intentional? I'm not sure, no. but it's, it's starting off on the right foot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, because I was kind of in that sweet spot, the right age for like this movie, you know. Yeah. So it's just like, just like the, um, the uh, Rube Goldberg like machine, oh, like, yeah. like the, to make his own breakfast, you know, and just how kitsch, like how kind of that seventies or more like fifties kind of kitsch. It's like, yeah, like mm -hmm. kind of a uh, mid-century modern, yeah, uh, yeah, retro f stove and fridge mm. and. His whole house is just covered in junk, just child's <laughs> just junk, tchotchkes everywhere. <laughs> you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's weird to think about it, like. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't want to sound too like serious, but is he? He's a child. <laughs> this boy is a hero. This boy is under arrest. Yes. Right? He's, like, he's, he's the innocence man. of a child. He's a man-child. 
Yeah, OG man child. He's the guess, original but, man child. But there's a lot of that, like you know, like Francis. Like they're both, yeah. li they're like little kids. I know you are, but what am I? 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 Infinity. The way that they argue and the way that they like just generally act and yeah. something like that. It's like, are they supposed to be children? <laughs> yeah. and we're just supposed to like, just kind of go we're with it. Supposed to pretend they're children. Yeah. But Pee Wee. He waters his own lawn. He tells he, well, the he neighbor. He has his own house. He, makes he his own owns breakfast. a house. He has money. For the most part, you know, yeah. yeah. He wants Dottie to wire him a bus ticket. So mm -hmm. I'll pay you back. Mm -hmm. And yeah, his parents don't wonder where he goes. Like he, I, but, I, I but like to you, imagine you, he doesn't have parents. You chalk it up to just it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like well, that's that, the which the, is fine. the reality that the movie creates, which is something I noticed more on this rewatch. Is there's so many of these movies, especially after Pee Wee, where it was like the. Uh, the, the, the vehicle for the comedic persona. Mm -hmm. Like after this, Elvira got her own movie, and then oh, you have yeah. like the 90s SNL movies, mm -hmm. like Coneheads. Wayne's and they're World, always, yeah. yeah, Wayne's World, he's a little more of like a normal human being. Mm -hmm. um, but they're always like the weirdo, and everyone's like, ooh, like, you know, nobody likes Ernest. Yeah. Everybody yeah. hates <laughs> Ernest. He's annoying and stupid. Everyone in those movies doesn't like Ernest. But in this movie, Pee Wee's everybody just like... Everybody loves Pee Wee. Everybody loves everybody, his neighbor. He's like, we're going to water my lawn now. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, Pee Wee. <laughs> yeah. like, just splashing water on his house. And he's just yeah. like, yeah, that's our Pee Wee. And, and that's yeah. what makes it when you have like like cute bike shop girl that wants to mm -hmm. date him and you don't like question it. Like, why would you want to date this fucking oddball? <laughs> <laughs> because the movie takes place in this world where he's not an outsider. And that's mm -hmm. so different for this like that type of for character. For that genre. You know, yeah. Which is one thing that Pee Wee, Big Top Pee Wee gets wrong, because they are everybody in the town, it's all like old people and they hate him. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta watch that one again. You really don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and like I said, he's just the most beloved person ever. I mean, even Francis, like, he's jealous of him. That's mm -hmm. the only reason why he's mean to him, you know? <laughs> but, it's but he's like, I want to be you. I want your bike, you yeah. know? Like, I want your stuff, you know, yeah. Well, and it's a world where that bike is so unique that Francis can't just buy another one exactly <laughs> like it. <laughs> It's a, it's a fantasy. It's a fantasy world. But it's kind of from the perspective of a child, because yeah. yeah. logically it doesn't make any sense that that yeah. bike. He, is he so... dreams about going, being in bike races. Yeah, like you know, like you know, when I when I grow up, I want to ride a bike. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. The dream stuff's so neat because, like, you have the dinosaur, which is mm -hmm. you know from the dinosaur scene when he's you know. Oh yeah. Then you have the clowns. The clown. The which... clown is what he tied the bike to. And I, I noticed too, like in the bike shop, there's a, like a picture on the wall of like the Tour de France, like, oh. like an advertisement, like, a, and, and I'm like, okay. So let's set up. All the, all, all the little details. And, and I love the shot when, and it is, it's, it's like, like a little kid would have this sort of mentality where after his bike's gone, uh, he starts seeing bikes everywhere. Oh, everywhere. <laughs> That's my favorite. And it's so perfect. Everyone's staged. riding a bike or a unicycle. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. It's like comedy <laughs> timing is just perfect. Like, first the one guy goes by in the bike, and then, then it becomes more and builds more. Builds and builds. It's like a classic silent comedy bit. It's yeah. It's like yeah. made out of like a Chaplin movie or then something. Then the flat shot, and the kids go by, and then the little <laughs> tiny bike goes by, and it's all perfectly timed <laughs> with the music. Just like, I think it's, it's Tim Burton. And I, I, I was I was watching it through the lens of what would Tim Burton do now? Oh mm -hmm. no! Yeah. And there oh, were certain yeah. scenes like there's there's a couple of Burton Burton esque shots. Like the big one is the the clowns with the I remember when they have him like on the on the yeah. stretcher there, or whatever. Well, that, and like, there's that kind of yes. yeah like the, that those distorted, doorways. Yeah, the distorted angles. It's very Burton. That's the one he know, like yeah. he, he spent half the budget on that mm -hmm. that shot. But the, I kept thinking, like, how would he do the, the magic shop scene, like, today? Oh, my goodness. And yeah. I'm like, oh, God. Well, the I, magic shop would be, like, a mansion. It'd yes. be this gigantic and it would be, CG set extension. Mm, right. Like, he, and it would be, like, gothic. these crazy yeah. camera mm -hmm. angles and big wide-angle lenses. And then you'd come out with these uh, uh, absurd, like, magic things. And it would just go on for an hour. And <laughs> I'm like, it was so perfect. Just the giant, these tiny little the giant space. Heads. Yeah, these tiny little amazing yeah. Larrys, you know, yeah. <laughs> And direct from Australia, the boomerang bow tie. Coming red. Uh, but there's one thing that actually bothers me a little bit, because um, it's like he uses like the chewing gum like later on, and he uses the, the glasses that he buys at the magic shop. 
he never uses the boomerang bow tie. Oh yeah, I was we talking about We were just talking about that. Yeah. Talking about, let's see Jay has there. an answer there's for a hole. you. There's a hole there. There's okay. a, well, it was a deleted scene. Deleted scene. Uh, he comes back, it yeah, because they set everything up, but he never uses the bow tie. But yeah, there's a scene when he's being chased at the end through the the back lot, um, where he uses it to distract the uh, security guards. Yeah. But then why'd they even keep that in the Yeah, the, they could have easily, they just, they easily yeah. could have yeah. just surgically removed that. You know, no one would be the wiser. Just, uh... So there's another flaw. We found one. Yeah, we got it. We got two now. Yeah, two, <laughs> two dings on the CinemaSins. In your, in your face. <laughs> they introduced the bow tie, but they never use it. <laughs> Ding! But yeah, that was, I, oh, I noticed that even when I was a kid. I, was it's like, probably I, wanted, a, to see, I wanted to see it in action. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. I, I, it's probably some kind of timing thing, like three things just works better. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, yeah, true, like, true. The, like the heads. Shrunken yeah. head, yeah. regular oh, size. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no! <laughs> I guess that would be not a flaw of the movie, but if you you can't like jive with the Pee Wee character, you're not gonna have a good time watching it. No, it's very full. It's, um, he's in every single second of this yeah, movie. Yeah, and it's very. I mean, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like I can't imagine that character being as popular, becoming that popular in any other time period. It's mm -hmm. just like the right place at the right time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. Yeah. If, if, if all of a sudden, Paul Rubens just started doing it. You mm -hmm. know, at, at that time and that you know. Or sort of doing it now, but it was that the age he was then. I don't. Yeah. Th I don't think it would fly as much, you know. Yeah. No, no. But I mean, the movie does a great job of even if you don't like the character, it builds up so much. Mm. How much he loves this bike, <laughs> yeah. and how dramatic it is when it's stolen. Like all mm. of a sudden, we bring up the the bike gets stolen. And he sees all the chains from where he yes. had it locked up. It's really shredded. And like, it's, yeah, it's, it's just really ripped like, apart. But that is like all these Dutch angles, and then the clown oh, has the like clown an evil angle. face and is laughing. And it's it's so like it's comedic because it's so dramatic. Mm -hmm. It's so like it's played so seriously from Pee Wee's point of view. My name is Tina. Excuse me, Tina, but can we go straight to I'll the... I'll tell you what, let's hold all questions until the end of the tour, okay? One of my favorite parts is uh, when they're at the doing the whole Al Alamo, like the, the tour guide thing, mm -hmm. and she's just going on and on about, like, tortillas and stuff <laughs> like that, you know? Yeah. Dan Hook's another uh, ground yeah, yeah. person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's when... Uh, they, he finds out that there's no basement at the Alamo, and just oh. all the other people on tour, they're like, yeah, we like, they all know that. <laughs> At the Alamo. <laughs> like he's like, he's like, yeah, that was not something they teach you in school. You know, like, that's his only reaction to it. But it's like, like everybody knew that there was no basement at the Alamo. Like it's, all, it's obvious laughing. common knowledge. The icing on the cake there is when the little kid just takes a picture yes, of him yes. in, his, in his moment. In of, his moment of despair. It's just very. Yeah. <laughs> and I just I love the framing too when he's uh, she's got those two Texan guys. He's just oh, positioned yeah. in between Oh, that, them. that guy just smiling over his shoulder. Like he's a, like pushing forward, like, you gotta see more. Maze. And he was like this. <laughs> well, buenos dias. Man, everybody's dead. <laughs> Phil Hartman, Jan Hooks. Yeah. Oh, I forgot Jan Hooks passed. She, yeah, somewhat recently, oh, the last couple of years. It's depressing. Thank you. I'm sorry, <laughs> to bring the mood down on our Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Okay. That's, that's how it Be goes. careful, Amazing Larry. Just, you're next. <laughs> yeah. That's another deleted scene with Amazing Larry. Oh, yeah? They set him up. Because in the movie, he's just the guy with the mohawk in the basement. Mm -hmm. That's his only... And you, you, because of... to say, Amazing Larry. Yeah, because because of the world the movie's created, you don't even, like, question it. It's just a <laughs> random guy with a mohawk, but... There's a lot of randomness in this, though. I mean, it's like a... a we're talking about the, um, the guy who Francis gets the bike away, like, you know, it's like, oh, we have to get rid of this. And it's like, just that, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 like, you know, just like Weasley a greaser guy. Weasley, yeah, it's like, you know. 50s greaser for <laughs> one scene. For just, yeah, just in and out, goodbye, you know, yeah. See you later, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how this has that structure uh, that a lot of comedies, I'm, I'm assuming it existed before this movie, but I feel like this is the one that kind of solidified the, the, the comedy where you just have like a very flimsy framework of a plot to mm -hmm. hang all these like scenes and set pieces on. Yeah. Because the middle of the movie is just cut. It's, it's called a road movie. Yeah, it's a road trip movie, but it's just, yeah, one character after another. Yeah. And they're all, 
every single one of them is like colorful and memorable. Mm -hmm. Like, even and like they Mickey. all love Pee Wee. And everybody loves Pee Wee. <laughs> yeah. Mickey may be a little too much. Yeah, uh, yeah. But <laughs> Simone, I love the bikers. Like, he gets into trouble with these bikers. You know, he knocks them all down and this and that. And he only has one final request, and it's to dance yeah. like a goofball. Like, right. to get, and you know what? They love it. Yeah. They freaking love it. It they works, because oh, the movie's yeah. told from that perspective. Yeah, of, yeah. Like, childlike yeah. Uh, mentality. But all, all He's these, gonna win them over. All these drunk smoking bikers, and like, just, you know, they, that's what they want to see, him being goofy, you know, yeah. He wins them all over, and then immediately crashes the motorcycle. <laughs> right through the That's, that's also <laughs> one that. of my favorite bits, yeah. <laughs> like, the timing of it is perfect. There's yeah. no music. <laughs> just the build, yeah. the giant build up to just a thud. <laughs> <laughs> And that that looks like a, that looked like a semi painful stunt too. Like you know that, that, that guy just hit that ground real hard. Pee Wee stunt double, the guy with the the hair helmet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a wig that's just way too. Like Pee Wee's hair is so short and fine, yeah. mm -hmm. and then they just put this like big wig on the some guy, <laughs> and he's falling off off stuff, or it's just so obvious. <laughs> but it's okay. Well, he had a very particular body type, so you know what yes. I mean. I, I, I just I wonder how hard it was to find somebody who had like at least a passable, you know, yeah. Right, stuntmen frame. usually don't mm -hmm. weigh a buck twenty. <laughs> and, uh, have a tiny little head. I mean, that could have been a joke in the movie, and you would have bought it too if the stuntman just didn't match. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What had American Summer stunt double? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it, one of the things that really makes it is the is kind of the surrounding cast of characters that kind of come in and out of his life like real fast, you know, like the um, the convict, mm -hmm. you know, on the run, you know, and just just Simone wanting to go to Paris, and there's there's the bikers, and there's this and that, and eventually at the very end, it's kind of nice that you kind of get to like say oh, hello yeah. to them all yeah, over yeah, again. Yeah. You oh know? yeah, it doesn't, it comes back. The hobo. it doesn't make any sense, but. Just that one hobo who would just would yeah, not stop seeing all, Jimmy Crackhorn. <laughs> <laughs> that's some, another one of the best like like uh, visual deliveries in the movie is him on the, the train with that hobo. <laughs> yeah. And at first they're singing and they're all happy. You do the dissolve. <laughs> Pee-wee's a little tired of it. You do another dissolve and he's just done. He just jumps out, out, of, the, ah! out of the train. <laughs> And he lands right exactly in front of the sign where, for the Alamo. Yeah, he's, right, he's, over, <laughs> he's perfectly right there. He's to be. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's that's another like it doesn't make any sense at the end. Yeah, all the they make a movie out of Pee Wee's story of mm -hmm. trying to find his bike, and they're at the premiere of the drive-in, and mm -hmm. the bum is there with like a, a bonfire. Yeah, like, yeah, like a they're, bum they're sitting would on be, crates, but they're, they're at the drive-in. They're, they're, like, in, they're in box seats. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How did Pee Wee find that bum to tell him to come to <laughs> come the to premiere? Come to my premiere, come to my party. Everybody's kind of representative of, yeah, because then he goes and sees Mickey, who's the convict, and he's mm -hmm. in the back of like a, uh, like a, like a prison bus. Yeah, a prison yeah. Like, he tries to sneak him a file in his <laughs> hot dog. <laughs> one soda, one foot long. And Simone's there with, of course, uh, a new boyfriend named Pierre. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just a nice way to tie it all together. Right. Like at the very end, I just thought it, like, it was just very delightful. But also, I love the movie version of Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Like the, the one that they make in oh, the movie, yeah. the in universe one, is just amazing. Oh, yeah, that's. I mean, just the most macho, bearded man, you know, yeah. And just, yeah. It's Johnny's James like Brolin. Morgan. Brolin. Yeah, yeah. And it's that's a, something that I think, like, because a lot of, like, older movies, when they have, like, celebrity cameos, it's like if you don't recognize who that person is, mm -hmm. the joke doesn't work. Mm -hmm. With this, it doesn't really matter if you know who Morgan Fairchild yeah, and James it, Brolin are. Exactly. Like, it's just clearly not a Pee Wee type mm -hmm. in that role. And then, I mean, we, we mention it all the time, but Pee Wee's cameo oh, yeah. in the movie. Oh, yes, yes. It's amazing. Where he's constantly like looking at the camera. They mouthing dub over mouthing his voice. the words. Yeah, yeah. When the other <laughs> actors are talking, he's mouthing their lines. Like, he, yeah. He, like when they're kissing, he just lines up behind them, perfectly between them, and just mm -hmm. like. He's, he's like receiving direction to like get out of the. He's like, yeah, yes. <laughs> you can see someone's kind of doing this, and then kind of moves off, and then he kind of drips back in. Well, you know, at the yeah. end, those two leave, and he realizes he's looking right at the yeah, camera, and he's, and he's like, he starts just doing yeah. busy work. Well, that, that too is like, that's like smart comedy. Like there's so many different types of comedy and jokes in this. Well then it's 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 not so many like, well like, there aren't modern comedies anymore, but mm -hmm. back when studios made comedies, <laughs> more recent ones, it's like you gotta have a, like we always talk about the Ghostbusters reboot where it's like you gotta have a joke, you gotta keep, keep, yeah. keep talking, you gotta have a joke. 
And the large Marge scene in this is so just like as a kid, I had to look away right. when she turned into the. Right. It, it, now you still, look at it, it's it, funny. Yeah, but, but it's still it, it's still kind of like it's weird. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's still more, it still scares the lizard brain in me. You yeah. Know, just because it's like it did it back then, so well, I just like it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not something that's like it doesn't have like a comedic payoff. It's mm-hmm. just this weird tone of well, like it just it just because well, she starts her story just like it was a night just like tonight. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but then when he gets to the diner, the guy tells almost the exact same story in yeah. the exact same way. You know, <laughs> it was exactly ten years ago, a night just like tonight. It was ten years ago, on a night just like tonight. So, you know, yeah, and just like I like that kind of that payoff to yeah. it, I guess. But yes, it's not something that's outwardly funny though. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just so like odd and tonally bizarre mm-hmm. that it's it's like funny in an abstract way where yeah. you're not laughing. Well, it's them making the most of every every frame of <laughs> film. Yeah. His adventures, he's always encountering like, they're not, I guess they are obstacles in, in a lot of ways, but just bizarre. It's, it's, like, it's like, a, like a hero's journey. Like he's going on an adventure and he's, he's encountering obstacles and villains and creatures, mythical creatures and whatnot. All He's inspiring all, people along the way with Simone. Mm-hmm. Searching for the Golden Fleece. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and like you could have just had him get dropped off at a truck stop. Yeah, yeah. And, but instead they add this little nugget in there of a, par- a spiritual paranormal ghost, <laughs> like for no reason. That Lars just, March head, by the way, I think all the stop motion in the movie, yeah. but specifically that one uh, was done by the Kyoto brothers. Oh. The creators of the critters oh. and killer clowns, but then you, uh, yeah, and then you have the stop motion dinosaurs from the, and that's another scene where it's like, it's m- more bizarre than funny that whole yeah. dream sequence with the yeah. clown doctors. The and, clown doctors when st- that's another one that like still to this day I'm like that's creepy. That is just so creepy. When uh, the when the, the one that has the mask on, yeah, yeah. With the, the teeth yeah. like yeah. painted on his face mm. and just like yeah, that's that that was scary. Yeah. You know, yeah. When you need that like the kids. Movies today are just too like sanitized, and th- mm-hmm. you need that element of challenge and fear and all that. It, like it, it gives you more a range of emotions. Yes, you know, it's, it's more of a ride. Yeah, you know, exactly. More of an exactly. adventure. It's a scary yeah. world out there. Pee Wee's off on an adventure to places he's never been. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know what he's going to encounter. Like mm-hmm. yeah, it builds all that up. He starts in his happy, safe home and uh, has to go out in the world and and discover new challenges. And, and monsters, and uh, that the basement, uh, there is no basement in the Alamo. <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> Everybody knows that. The stars at night are big and bright. Big in the heart of Texas. <laughs>And then the third act, so it turns out his bike is being used in a production on the oh, Warner Brothers back He lot. conveniently <laughs> sees it on television. Oh, yeah. like, this is the kid getting given a bike, mm-hmm. and he's like, oh, thank you. <laughs> and it's just like, like, how convenient is that? But it's like, it works in this All, all this series of events had to happen to lead up to him being in the hospital at that moment, at yep. that time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's just funny because, like, they're not, they're, they're making, like, like, Beach blanket bingo movies mm-hmm. and like a Godzilla film. Oh with, yeah, there's a Godzilla film. With all Jap- it's, it's things that were not doesn't like. Doesn't make sense. It's not realistic. Yeah. It's all things there's that like a would not be being dancing made. lady. Yeah. There's, there's like, like like red stormtroopers. Like there's like yeah, it's it's what you think of it like as a, as a back lot. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah like, exactly. You know. It's like a kid's idea of yeah. what right. yes. movie making probably is. Yeah. yeah. All right, Pee Wee. When you get back, we can settle up at the drive-in. What? <sighs> what? But yeah, you totally buy her as like actually being into Pee Wee because mm-hmm. they're cute together. And then even like, yeah, yeah, and then mm-hmm. but even like Chuck, the owner of the the bike shop, mm-hmm. I don't. It, it's not even like a joke. But the cops, Pee Wee's bike is stolen. He goes back into the bike shop and passes out, and all the cops are there and they're talking so seriously. Mm-hmm. But the one is talking to Chuck and he's like, uh, "Yes, I am Chuck. That's me." And he points at the sign. <laughs> it's just a brief little thing, and I don't even know why it's funny. But yeah, yeah, but it's just there. You know, yeah. Yeah. Are you the owner? Oh, yes, that's me. They call me Chuck. Chuck gets shortchanged at the end in terms of the concessions, though. Oh, yeah. He he doesn't give anything to Chuck. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's true, yeah. You're right. Yeah, also, I I always notice that he, like, uh, Dottie asks for her candy, and he just throws it at her. (laughs) 
<laughs> and like I said, it's loose candy. It's not in a packaging no, or anything like that. No. Just in his dirty pocket, you know. Just he doesn't. He doesn't really like her. She's just constantly because <laughs> girls are icky. Him. When girls you're a, when you're a little boy, even if you're a grown man, you have the mentality but that, but of a little boy. But that's how the movie ends. So they ride off, you know, in silhouette in front of yeah. the, the, the the movie. Just as friends, though. Mm-hmm. He well, friend zoned her. Well, you don't. You never know. It's a new chapter. Yeah, He's, and now his dog's got a little, little girl dog friend that's pink. You know, yeah, which which is a dog from Silence of the Lambs. Oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. well, he, I think will go on to be. Uh, the yeah. dog was a little baby then. Yeah. Spray painted it pink. So it's a famous dog. It's it's a famous movie dog. Yeah. yeah. And uh, soon it will be barking into a dirty hole in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> he gets the hose again. Well, you had pointed out, and that's another scene, like uh, he finally gets his bike back, you have this big epic chase all throughout the Warner mm-hmm. Brothers lot. <laughs> and then, <laughs> once you get off the lot, for no reason, they throw in this scene where he has to save all these uh, animals from a burning <laughs> a, pet shop. A, a pet shop that has uh, ducks and chimpanzees. <laughs> <laughs> and, just, and no one's, no one's there. Yeah. Like, it's, you know, yeah. Thematically, story-wise, it's Pee-wee's ultimate redemption. Yes. As a character, he's not being selfish. He's not. Yes, he's being a hero. Yes. Yeah. He, he, in the end, he he stops to say, even though he's gotten what he wants. Mm-hmm. The whole movie is just him questing after mm-hmm. his bike, yeah. and now and he's being very selfish along the way. Right. He could have just kept going and gotten home with his bike and everything, but he stopped to help animals because he loves animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that he was a bad character, but. Um, that's his arc. But no, yeah, he's a hero. He was now. single-minded. Mm-hmm. And single-minded and selfish. And, yeah. and, and he even saved the snakes. Yes. <laughs> Not that, that shot. You can't be he's selfish. Running out, he's screaming yeah. with yeah. the snakes. <laughs> Although it's, it always bothered me, because the snakes are what he does dead last, but in the back of that shot, there's still, there's still more fit. goldfish. Yeah, but then, you know what he says when they wake him up? Uh, like oh, when yeah. he first wake him up, he goes, there's still, I think there's some, still some fish inside. Oh, they use that. Oh, okay. They use that. Because, well, yeah. You hear me? There's still a few more fish inside. <coughs> this boy is a hero. He's like, I've done everything I can do. I tried. I tried to I find tried. a flaw. Mm-hmm. Yep. And nope. I couldn't. Nope. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. But no, he actually does. He, he closes that hole right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he ends up on a back lot, ironically. <laughs> well, right. I mean, just that chase sequence is just, you know, it's amazing. Oh, it's, it's... it's it's you have Santa Claus on a sled, and then Godzilla ends up in the sled, <laughs> being pulled by a boat. I yeah. guess that's one thing that is kind of. I mentioned like the cameos; you're not necessarily having to get them for it to work. Oh yeah, yeah. You don't have to know who Twisted Sister is. You yeah. Know, to know well, I would getting. say that's the one, and maybe just just because of the music, but that's where it makes it feel a little dated. Yeah. That and like the kids constantly saying "radical." You're gonna burn in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know it's the kids' movie. You know, yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's a good question. Is this a kids' movie? All right. Daddy still working on your bike? No, had a bad couple days already. What's she doing to it? Can't really talk about it. <laughs> yeah, that daughty, she's really radical with bikes. Come on, Simone, let's talk about your big butt. I've been waiting for somebody to put it to me like that for so long. You know, is it, or is it like, you know, was it made for children or it's, was it made for it's adults? It's made for everyone. Yeah. 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 I think it's, yeah, like the original stage play was, there's like some adult stuff in it. Yeah, yeah. The, the Pee Wee's Playhouse, that's obviously aimed more at mm-hmm. children. Yeah, but this um, is, yeah. This I, is that, that middle ground where it's like it works for, I mean, I was watching it the other day and I was still laughing. Yeah, yeah. I've seen this movie so many times. Mm-hmm. Right, I miss uh, Tim Burton from the the days when he made Pee Wee's Big Adventure. That's true. That's mm-hmm. it. <laughs> I miss I'm that sure, Tim Burton. I'm sure he'll bring it back with Beetlejuice too. Oh my goodness. Uh, although, I'll, yes, <sighs> there are early good early Tim Burtons, but I think as he gained more more power, mm-hmm. it just just, just bloated and blo- like well, and he got like, corrupted oh, by a fact of CG uh, ruined Willy everything. Wonka yeah, movie. Yeah. Like this is just that's another thing you were talking about comparing the, 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 modern the, Tim Burton, like all the uh, factory stuff yes. and Willy Wonka. Is so it's just Tim like Burton a big empty voids with factories. CG arms, mm-hmm. robot arms, and yeah, that's another thing too. I was thinking of the intro, the intro, the, the you know the Rube Goldberg machine. Mm-hmm. It's like so perfectly simple mm-hmm. and, and childlike, and I'm just thinking like. Pee-wee's house in 
in modern Tim Burton would just build these giant, like bizarrely shaped sets, and yeah. and it would be like It'd big go on for twenty minutes, big robots that are picking up the toast, and mm -hmm. a big bird flies in, and eggs fall out, and, like, <laughs> and then little like drones fly up and catch the eggs, and it would just be like Whoa. over the top. And you're giving away million dollar ideas, <laughs> all right? <laughs> just a little, a little plastic bird to break the egg, yeah. and then a little thing comes and drops it in. The, well, and the it funniest... always bothered me that all he ate was those two pieces of the yes. biscuit. I was about to say, that's the funny breakfast. payoff to yeah, it. Yeah, this yeah. Is a, this big elaborate thing. He dumps Mr. T breakfast on it. <laughs> he takes two bites of Mr. T cereal, then he's done. <laughs> With his oversized fork. Yeah, yeah. Yes, giant. He, he butters his toast even. <laughs> and then he covers it in Mr. T and eats two bites and is done. And I guess that's, that's very childlike, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, eating yeah. one bite of your food and just going, I'm done. <laughs> I can go play. <laughs> Aren't you going to eat that bacon? Come on, Pee Wee. Come on, Pee Wee. <laughs> Pee Wee. <laughs> Daddy impression. Ah, uh, Pee Wee. Ah, <laughs> uh, all right, Pee Wee. Uh, oh, before I forget, we were talking about uh, D. Snyder. And uh, in the end credits, there's a little chunk. Mm -hmm. And it says special guest appearances, and it's Twisted Sister is credited, not Dee Snyder. But then um, uh, James Brolin, uh, Morgan Fairchild, Morgan Fairchild, somebody else, and oh, Milton Berle's in the movie. I, oh, I yeah, wanted yeah. to say that's Milton Berle doing the one-liner. Yeah. What do you think I got down here, a duck? <laughs> and he's not credited as a special guest, and oh. I don't even think he's in the credits. Huh. Huh. And I was like, that's definitely Milton Berle. Why, why isn't it? Uncredited his... cameo. Yeah, did they just forget? You know? I, yeah. <laughs> I, I was, I'm like, was that not Milton Berle? Like, that was that, definitely Milton Berle. He's doing Burl. a one-liner. Um, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. A duck. And, and yeah, he was making, yeah, he was making pretty much a, a reference to his, his penis, I remember in that one, that <laughs> joke. Yeah. Because he, he was notorious for having a really big one. Yes. And so I, I, forget, I learned I forget, that in one of our videos. We talked yeah. about this. Yeah. 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 I no I, yeah. And I think he, the, I forget what the one liner is, but it's definitely a reference. Yeah. To yeah. It's something about a duck. He says, that's, yeah, yeah. The, that, can you call it, that's not a duck. Yeah. That's something yeah, I never realized. Yeah. That's not like a duck down there. Like, you know, yeah. it, was, it was just definitely one of those like very subtle like things, you know. Milton Berle's giant cock. Yeah. <laughs> I could have foot longer. <laughs> You're gonna burn in hell. <laughs> and you know what, too? I was watching that, and I, I, I know Twisted Sister, their gimmick was, you know, cross-dressing or whatever, but every 80s music video that had a giant car in it mm -hmm. would have, like, bikini-clad babes crawling all hood. over it, but the women in this are like dressed head to toe, like in like leather, and they're just like kind of like- It's like rocker girls. Just like yeah. walking he, slowly next to the car. They're not like being like erotic and yeah. uh, suggestive mm -hmm. or anything. So that was also- And he's the one writhing on the hood. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was very un 80s music video. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they're also making like a Tarzan movie. Another thing they weren't yeah. making in the 80s. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I noticed that too. Like he just drives by a Tarzan and then he ends up swinging on yes, the, you know, somehow. To, with his bike still connected to him. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's got strong legs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and when would you ever need your own ejection seat on your own bike? Yeah. Like what's, what purpose does it serve? Yeah. I mean, other than security maybe, maybe, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But yes. then why didn't it work when he was originally stole the bike? Right. Or is that something he added later right, after he got right. the bike back? That could have been, like if mm -hmm. Francis ever tries to take my bike again, yeah, I'll just gonna inject him, him right? into the moon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a removable handle. Yeah, that was, I thought that was strange too, that they, they, he, he knew something like this was going to happen. Right, you know, yeah. someone's gonna try to grab your handle while you're riding your bike. <laughs> That's again, a, that's a the mind of a child. Yeah, like, yeah. You never know when you're but gonna those need are that. Cin those are definitely cinema sendings, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Why did his bike have a removable handle? What purpose would did that Did he plan for this? <laughs> Or a fog machine that shoots out the back. Yes. Like, yeah. There's a smoke. He sh it shoots out oil. Oh, uh, oil slick, uh, yeah. 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 It's like a, yeah. It's like and a, he actually has a turbo. He has a thing that launches right. him up, up to the side <laughs> of the house. Yes. <laughs> he has a jet engine. Yeah. <laughs> It's all forgivable. There are zero mistakes. Yeah. And I watched this Blu-ray and it was properly matted because mm. the old VHS version you'd see beneath the... the it was open matte, yeah. Yeah, the bike uh, 
the thing on the side of the bike where the chain comes out. Oh, yeah, yeah. You would see the chain being fed underneath uh, it. I, I always remember that. And I thought, and like, as a kid, I was confused. I was like, is that a joke? <laughs> is that supposed to Are be Are you there? supposed mm-hmm. to see that he's just pulling it through the bottom of the... I, it was so and weird. The, and the open mat also shows the... When he's like falling asleep driving the car, the, the signs that you could still see it in the actual. You still see them, yeah. But there's the signs are moving on a track. Yes, I remember. By, I noticed and, that and when like I was a kid too. Totally visible in the home video version. Mm-hmm. But uh, again, that's not a mistake. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's a part of the charm. It's part of the charm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, got to see how the sausage is made, you know. Low budget <laughs> movie. Oh, mm-hmm, yeah. And the low budget f- led to the, the funniest five seconds in any movie ever, which is when he's in the dark. And he puts on the night vision goggles, <laughs> and those lights come on. It's just a bunch of big stuffed animals <laughs> and a, a, like a actual raccoon. Yeah. There's a couple of real animals, but it's just surrounded by all these like, like yes. taxidermy animals. <laughs> and then it just and then the movie just moves on. It just moves on. It's my, possibly my favorite joke in any movie ever. <laughs> headlight. Goggles. Headlight glasses. Yeah, yeah, headlight glasses. Yeah, headlight glasses. I think a lot of the, the, the script you can attribute to, I mean, obviously Paul Rubens was very funny and at a very kind of specific point of view, mm-hmm. but I think a lot of it can be attributed to Phil Hartman because mm-hmm. you look at it compared to Big Top Pee Wee and it's like night and day in terms of like, w- this works, this doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and Hartman didn't have anything to do with the... Yeah, yeah the, I think they had kind of a falling out uh, I I because of the TV of show because he didn't have Phil Hartman come on and write the show and because mm-hmm. Phil Hartman is like such a huge part of creating the the original stage play yeah, in yeah. this movie. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know if they ever patched it up, but I know for a while, yeah, they had a falling out because of that. So, and it, it shows Big yeah, Top Pee Wee. That's unfortunate. Uh, like we were talking about all the elements coming together perfectly. That movie's like the exact opposite. All right, all right! Yeah, you have yeah. A boring director, you have a bad <laughs> script that doesn't seem to even like understand the Pee Wee character almost. Oh. I can't remember the last time I saw Big Top Pee Wee, probably just that one time, mm-hmm. you know, and that's like after yeah. he came out. You know, I yeah. saw it in the Dollar Theater, like, and I was just like, <laughs> it felt like I was at a funeral. <laughs> it was just dead silent and dark, and and I'm just like, what, what? And then, I never saw it again. Yeah, well, I'm glad uh, that that wasn't the last Pee Wee movie. He had the Netflix movie, which uh, I don't think either of you have seen I've, that I haven't right? seen it, no. It's, it's genuinely very funny and weird. It leans more into the surreal than this movie does. Okay. It has some very bizarre gags. Parts of it feel very like John Waters-like okay. in terms of the tone. John glad, Watery? John Watery. So I'm glad that Pee Wee got one more movie that wasn't Big Top Pee Wee. That's not funny. <laughs> It's like kind of watery. That's why I John tried watery. Just, I tried to just keep moving. <laughs> Splash it all over. It's very John Watery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted to ask if uh, Tim Burton or ever worked again with Paul Rubens. Yes. yes. And what? Um, Batman Returns or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah he played him and, him and he Simone. Played the, he played the uh, the penguin, uh, penguin's father. It's Paul Rubens and Simone together again. No shit. Yeah. In ba- okay. At the very beginning of Batman Returns. I knew Simone was in that, but I forgot what you played. And that oh. was that was mm. after uh, the the Paul Rubens famous uh, movie theater incident. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of Tim Burton, you know, giving him a, a shot to. Mm-hmm. Which is which is movie. like ridiculous by today's standards. Oh of, yeah, of scandal. If, mm-hmm. Yeah, if you ever look into it, the whole thing was like the cops had nothing to do that night. Mm-hmm. And they were like, yeah, let's go arrest someone at the porno theater. Mm-hmm. I think it was just the big the biggest scandal. Really, was just the fact that he was the host of a children's show. That's, yeah, that's, that's what's the salacious element yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, because if yeah yeah if he if it wasn't that, then it'd be like oh just eh. You know, if it know. was Gary Busey, <laughs> yeah, we we would forgive him. Yes, well, if it was Gary we would, Busey, we would he'd understand. Be, he'd be doing it on like a public park bench. Yes, so. and that happened. And that, so yeah, and that like, actually happened. And it barely moved the needle. No, of no. anything. So that's, that's, a, just, that's our Busey. That's just <laughs> Gary Busey <laughs> masturbating in the park <laughs> in front of like children and people and daylight, <laughs> like. Paul Rubens went in the movie theater. And it's funny learning about about that whole incident later, because I remember as a kid, my dad used to get the uh, Na- uh, National Enquirer. And so mm-hmm. it had like the mug shot on oh, it. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't even like understand what he did, but he looked so like sinister in that mug yeah, shot. He looked, yeah, it's like, Pee Wee looked... betrayed me. Because I loved Pee Wee. Because he did look like the I didn't know what he did, but I knew it was a mug shot. So I, I was like, that fucker, yeah. he broke my heart. Because <laughs> well, he did look like the evil version of Pee Wee. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. With the, the hair, the hair. facial hair. Yes. Um, Oh. So I'm glad he, he was able to bounce back. Tim Burton gave him a small part in Batman Returns. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, he had a lot of roles. And then he, yeah, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He was. I remember he was oh, very yeah. funny on Murphy Brown. 
Mm. He, he was at a cameo on that a few times as like Murphy Brown's assistant or something. And kind of, yeah, it took, it took a little time, but his career bounced back. Remember the Murphy Brown scandal? Dan Quayle was like, it's so morally corrupt that oh, Murphy yeah. Brown is a single mother. Yes. <laughs> like, uh, Those are the days. That's what we're upset about. <laughs> Simpler times. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, what? It doesn't help matters when primetime TV has Murphy Brown, a character who supposedly epitomizes today's intelligent, highly paid professional woman, mocking the importance of fathers by bearing a child alone and calling it just another lifestyle choice. I've actually noticed that there's a lot of like, just people with one line in this movie. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, yeah, they, they, you would, that wouldn't happen like nowadays. You know, they're like, yeah, you because you, you, every time you give someone a line, you have to pay them more. You know? Oh, yeah. And so it's just like, yeah, there's even just, like even in the, um, the diner one where he's like, it was a night just like tonight. It was like, no, there's actually another guy who has one line kind of setting that up. And just like, there's a lot of oh, that yeah. kind of like thing. Like, you know, even just like, the cop having an extra line in there, you know, just like, oh, they, like it's very, you don't really see that so much anymore. You right, know? right. Yeah. You have your main speaking characters and then you just have a bunch of extras, you yeah. know, and you know, they, they, have to, they have to react with their face, but not with their words. It's like, no, this movie actually has a lot of that, you know. Yeah. Even the cop that took out the, the file from the foot long hot dog. Yes. Oh, said, yeah. <laughs> wait a minute. His line was, wait a minute. It doesn't immediately arrest Pee Wee. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's his premiere. Everyone's there to see this <laughs> big movie. <laughs> Don't you want to stay for the rest of the movie, Pee-wee? <laughs> I lived it, Daddy. <laughs> oh, what a magical film. Yes. It's, uh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. I, I can't believe we haven't talked about it. I can't wait to show it to my kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll say, why is this guy so weird? Yeah, what is this? This isn't funny. <laughs> it's, it's a timeless film. It's a timeless classic. Where's my YouTubes? Yeah. <laughs> I want to watch Mr. Beast. <laughs> Mr. Beast. <laughs> the end. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone even Mr. Beast? Mr. Beast. <laughs> <laughs>